Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a City Council workshop meeting date April 6, 2016. Time is 6.45 p.m. Purpose of this meeting is to interview uh, board applicant Stephen Narada. Did I say that right, Steve? Yes. Okay, Steve, if you would please, sir, have a seat up there at the table. This is the Inquisition, Steve. Yeah, there you okay. go. <laughs> Steve, what we, first of all, thank you for, for your application. Uh, we're certainly delighted to have you here. You have a lot of, a lot of experience. Uh, what we'd like to do is just have you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, just whatever you want to discuss. Sure. And um, your interests and that sort of thing. And then each of us will have some questions, and then we'll go from there. But go, I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead. Okay, very good. Can you hear me okay? Everyone can you hear me okay? Can you hear? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, council and uh, council members, thank you for um, you know, meeting with me today and, and going through my application. Um, I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of my background and my interest in, in uh, uh, becoming a, a member here. And um, originally born and raised in the New York, New Jersey area, spent most of my, my life there. Uh, uh, previously a software engineer for about 16 years in, in New Jersey and uh, one day I kind of had my midlife crisis and told my wife we're moving to Florida and I'm going to do real estate and literally that's what happened. I quit a very high profile position up there. Uh, came down here in 2004. I never heard there was hurricanes and of course hurricanes came through <laughs> and experienced that for the first time. Um, over that period of time I, I started as a salesperson in real estate. I eventually became uh, the VP of Operations for the, the uh, largest uh, REMAX office, REMAX Elite here in Suntry. And uh, about 2009, late 2009, I had the opportunity to open my own brokerage. And I opened my own brokerage at Exit First Class Realty in uh, Melbourne. And uh, at that time, we had one agent. And today, we've got three locations throughout Brevard County and about 70 agents. Um, Merritt Island uh, and Palm Bay are the other locations there. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking to expand, of course, Beachside. Uh, I was fortunate when I first moved down here. We, we lived in the uh, Melbourne area and enjoyed my time there. But as my kids got older and uh, left the nest, so to speak, I decided to downsize and we came to a beautiful satellite beach here. And we live right on the beach and we love it. <clears throat> I've been uh, renting here for the first five years and uh, last year we had the opportunity to purchase the condo directly from the owner and decided this is going to be our final you know, place. Because of that, I've uh, recently joined the, uh, or been uh, selected to the Homeowners Association Board at my condo condominium complex. And I've had some interest also, I said, I need to really get out there. Uh, I, I belong to all the chambers of commerce throughout the county as it is, and I'm pretty well known uh, in the Melbourne, Palm Bay areas, but nothing really beats I said, this is my opportunity to kind of maybe make an impact in a city that I really fell in love with since I've been living here for the last six years. And uh, that's why I'm here today. Okay. Great introduction. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Councilman Gott to see if she has any questions. Lori? First of all, thank you for not calling me a councilman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it about the Planning and Zoning Board that uh, attracts you? Um, being my background in, in real estate, you know, anything, I guess, related to uh, um, the infrastructure of the city, the future um, going forward, I'm very interested in um, being, um, knowing what's going to happen with the city that I fell in love with down here and where, where, where we're looking for in the future. And what is it about Satellite Beach that, that attracted you so much? Well, obviously, the, the beach was, was the number one item, but uh, outside of that, uh, my wife liked the small town uh, feel here. It was not like Cocoa Beach, where there's a lot of uh, tourists, tourists you know, trapped over there. Uh, very nice families over here, and uh, we live right across the street from, uh, uh, you know, movie theaters, and we walk, and, and I love the convenience of all that, so... And Lorraine, in, fa in fairness, uh, one of the things we were, I talked to Courtney about earlier, and I know Steve's aware of it, is a potential at appointment to the Board of Adjustment. So you may, if you have any questions, you've wanted to ask to that. So, yeah, I, I think I had, uh, there was another opening in another position uh, originally that I applied for as an alternative. And then I think Lenore had mentioned that uh, there was another, maybe a need for me in the, uh, uh, was it the Board of Adjustment? Yes. Okay. 
Would, and that's with something you'd be willing to? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I, I want to get my foot in the door, so to speak. Right. Rain, I'll give it back to you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Are you familiar with the Board of Adjustment? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. um, <clears throat> what is your, if you could um, effect changes or, or give direction to the city, what direction do you see for Satellite Beach? Where would you like to see us go? Um, well, is you talking about the uh, infrastructure or are you talking internally? Um, what do you mean? Whatever occurs to you. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess along the lines of infrastructure. You know, again, I'm, um, my mindset is really to kind of uh, analyze and understand where we are now before I can actually plan going forward. And to be honest with you, I have not been involved with what's going on in the city at all. This is my first opportunity. So before I can really speak about that, I'd like to kind of have the opportunity to really know where we are, what's already been put in place moving forward before I can really address that, to be honest with you. Okay, that's fair. But, that's the way I got okay. started. I, okay. I didn't, I've been in the city for three months. It's okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, we, um, we're in the process, possibly, of combining two of our boards, Planning and Zoning and the Conference of Planning Advisory Board, which means that instead of bringing on more people, we're going to be needing fewer people for those mm -hmm. boards. So uh, in addition to the Board of Adjustment as an alternate, uh, would any of these others appeal to you? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned zoning was one of the... Uh, well, planning and zoning. Yeah, planning and zoning. That would be something I... Yeah, I, I think that's what I originally had to apply yeah. for, so... Yeah. Um, okay, so what I hear you saying is that uh, you would be willing to serve on just about any board uh, so that you could come on board and learn about the city. And yes. Ab yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Don. Steve, thank you again for volunteering sure. in this wonderful city of ours because I think everybody that you're looking at up here has done basically what you've done. Um, moved, I moved here in 1984 and kind of did the same thing. I started getting involved early on because I just thought it was a wonderful place and, and uh, it still is as wonderful as it was back then. So um, the Board of Adjustment basically is a board that doesn't always meet every month. Um, it only meets when there's um, someone requesting a variance. Mm -hmm. So that will get your feet wet. Sure. You'll kind of understand um, the process of how our codes work and when someone is looking to do something that's outside of the realm of what our codes um, allow them to do, that's where they come to the Board of Adjustment. Mm -hmm. It is a quasi-judicial board along with the Code Enforcement Board. They are the only two quasi-judicial boards in our city. They are the judge and the jury. Decisions that the Board of Adjustment make or the Code Enforcement Board do not come back to this council. Every other board in the city, this council um, gets recommendations from those boards. So the Board of Adjustment is a great board to get started on. You may not meet every month, but as things come up, if you see there's other openings that come up on boards that you might want to sure. uh, move to, um, the ability to move is, is, is there for you. So, um, again, thank you so much. Um, I, I know where you came from because I came from up there too, yeah. and I'm glad that I'm not there. Yes, me too. So, <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to Satellite Beach, and, and we look forward to having you work with us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Steve, the way the process works is at the end of the meeting, agenda item number 14, uh, the council discusses the applicants and, and makes recommendations regarding appointments and that sort of thing. Um, that's, of course, near the end of the meeting. You're welcome to stay for that, or you can contact City Hall tomorrow and speak with Lenore and find out what the outcome of that is. But uh, okay. any any questions of you for us? Anything that, we, that we're missing that you um, know? Not really, but I guess I can make a... a final statement about myself. You know, uh, I've been very fortunate in, uh, in, in uh, the real estate market here with the ups and downs, and uh, I've had some really great uh, times and some really bad times where I, I kind of felt myself going through. But at this point in my, in my career, uh, I've got a pretty stable uh, business that I've, I've grown, and uh, empty nester, not that I have a ton of time, but 
I've always wanted to give back, and that's the, the main thing. And we, we're involved with, we do a lot of charity events for my company, et cetera. You know, I'm, I'm involved with Habitat for Humanity, for example. Um, so I said this is another way where I can get myself out there and contribute uh, outside of just my own business, and that's what, why I'm here today. Well, the idea of giving back is, is one thing we do like to hear, I will tell you that. And all of us on the council are, are basically volunteers, they're non-paying positions, so we're kind of like you, so we're welcome to give it back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Please. Oh, sure. Um, the, uh, as Dominic was saying, the Board of Adjustment does not meet regularly. Yeah. And I think that if you got on that, um, you may... Uh, have some frustration at not being put to use. And so mm -hmm. my question to you is, mm -hmm. we have openings on our recreation board and on our Sampson's Island working board. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any interest in, first of all, recreation, planning, re helping to plan recreation mm -hmm. programs for the city? And Sampson's Island, are you familiar with Sampson's Island? That, that pro uh, uh, part I'm not. Okay, well, it's right across the canal between okay. Tortoise and um, Lansing Island. Lansing, okay. I know them. Um, and um, as a matter of fact, that's how I got started with the city. Okay. The, the city first formed a Samson's Island Committee to decide what to do mm -hmm. with the island, and that's how I got involved. Mm -hmm. uh, they do meet regularly, and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's called a working board, and it is. They mm -hmm. go over on Saturday mornings, and they actually work over there. They have projects that are ongoing. Um, does something like that uh, sound like I, uh, I would consider it. Um, uh, going back to the, the other department you mentioned, recreation, uh, which I had noticed too, I think, when I had saw it online, I, I believe it was noted. Um, I'm the, uh, the founder of a program I put together in Vieira about eight years ago. Um, uh, one of my uh, friends here, who actually grew up across the street from me up in New Jersey, uh, when uh, shortly after Vieira High School had opened up, uh, we went to watch a couple of wrestling matches. And at that time, we saw how poorly the uh, team had done. And we came, we, you know, we, both of us wrestled in, 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 uh, in high school and come from a part of the country that's kind of a mecca for, for the, the sport. So I approached the, uh, the principal and also the uh, high school coach uh, about creating a feeder program, and they were all for it. So about eight years ago, I formed the Vera Pride Youth Wrestling Club. Uh, and this year, it's, it's eight year in existence. There's about 60 uh, kids that are in the program. We run from February through the end of May. And that's something that I, I don't have any little kids. I do because I love the sport and love to give back and teach. Um, so when I saw recreation, I'm a big sports fanatic. I've played baseball, football, um, just about any sport out there. So I thought that might be a fit if there was uh, not an opening into the, in the other areas. So if you were given a choice between um, Board of Adjustment, mm -hmm. which meets very irregularly, yeah. uh, the Recreation Board, and the Sampson's Island Working Board, which would you choose? It would have to be only one? For now. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to know more about the Samson uh, board. It would be probably be that uh, or recreational because of being uh, more frequent meetings. And, and by infrequent, do you mean the, uh, the board of adjustment meets, you know, three or four times a year? Okay, so it's very, I wouldn't even feel like I'm really helping. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if you need, have a need there, of course, I, I would love to do that and maybe if I could do something else. But I'll take anything where you can need me. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment that the Board of Adjustment, um, if he could actually simultaneously serve on a Board of Adjustment and a Recreation Board or Samson's Island Working Committee or Working Board if he wanted to. Um, the Recreation in Samson's Island does not meet the statutory requirements for dual office holding. Okay. So just let you know. That's good. Yeah. That would play interest in me doing something like that. But you should understand that mm -hmm. the uh, Board of Adjustment does mm -hmm. not do any planning for the city whatsoever. Yeah. It, uh, it hears cases of where people want a variance from the city code, uh, and there yeah. are very specific legal guidelines that must yeah. be followed. Uh, I've actually been involved from the real estate side, oh, so okay. where I have usually sellers that are trying to sell property that um, recently, there was a commercial property I had on in Melbourne on US-1 that, for all intents and purposes, it looked like it could be a, a used car lot, a lot of space, small building. However, it did not meet the requirements that the city had for frontage on US-1. So, uh, but the best use was that to sell it as a used car lot, 
So I advise my seller, if you really want to get top dollar, you need to apply for a variance to, to get that approved. So, so you know the that, I'm understanding. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So, yeah, go ahead. So based on what I'm hearing, Courtney says we can appoint you to the Board of Adjustment <laughs> and we can appoint you to either Samson's Island or REC. So yeah. Samson Island or REC. Yeah. In, in Which that, one? The difference is planning yeah. and going and working real hard on a Saturday morning. So yeah. So that, that's the difference REC, between REC plans, Samson's Island yeah. works. I mean, well, well, probably now we'd say that in REC. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, Steve. Well, thank you, sir. Um, okay. We appreciate you coming out. And we'll, like I said, we'll make a decision at the end of the meeting. So okay. Thanks, sir. If you don't mind, uh, I literally just came. Uh, we once a year we have an awards banquet for the entire state of Florida for my exit realty co company, and uh, we were just there. And I just drove back from Orlando, so I haven't even been home yet. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm going to just leave. <laughs> can't, can't blame you. Okay. okay. We'll thank see you good. for coming. Thanks. Thank appreciate it. Okay, there's no more applicants. This meeting is adjourned. All right. <coughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a city council meeting, a regular city council meeting of April 6th, 2016. Time is approximately 7.08 p.m. If you would please rise and join me in a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could have a moment of silence, please. And if you join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. Well, again, everybody, welcome to tonight's meeting. We're, we're missing a mayor and a, and a council person. Both have out-of-town events that they have to attend to today. Uh, but let's move on to agenda item number three, citizens' comments. Citizens' comments for not, are for non-agenda items. Are there, citizens' comments is now open. Are there any comments? Okay, hearing none, bring it back to council. Move on to uh, agenda item number four, which is count city council comments. And tonight, let's start with uh, Dominic Montanaro. Dom? I have none. Okay. Rory? No. I also have nothing. We'll move on to agenda item number five, which is the city manager report. Courtney? That's good, because I have a lot. Okay. <laughs> and I, can, you, can you start out with how the seating arrangement changed? That, yes. That's throwing me off, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because I'm getting over a cold. Lorraine ah. has one, and Jim doesn't want it. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll put that in a minute. And, move on. That's fine. I'm, and I'm moving over this way. <laughs> so we figured we'd sit next to each other since we, you know. Okay. How's that? That's a, that's a first for this council, I'll tell you. All right. But anyhow, Courtney, go ahead. <laughs> um. For, uh, we have a lot of events actually coming up this month, and some of the highlights, there are, there are more than this in the REC program, um, but I'm just highlighting some of the, the popular ones. We have a little sports superhero challenge on April 9th um, this weekend at the DRS Center Gymnasium, and this is for two and a half to six-year-olds. Um, our little, support, little sports director um, comes in. It's... Um, and does an event with the smaller kids, and they all dress like superheroes. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then on April 16th, we have the annual Run For It 5K, which is also at the DRS Center, and this is to benefit the nonprofit to write Love on Her Arms. Um, and you can, run, you can register that at the Running Zone website. On April 17th, we have the Powell Lions Club Pancake Breakfast at the Civic Center right here, and, um, and that's from 8 until 12. And the tickets are five dollars uh, for adults and three dollars for children. Uh, informational items: I did want to let you know that the city of Indian Harbor Beach has amended their direction on the trapping of coyotes. And I don't know if you've been able to read that in the newspaper, but part of the problem was in that community, um, the re there was a resident that was actually caught feeding the coyotes, um, and many of the residents have since reported that the coyotes have been less intimidated by the. Um, you know, by the side of humans, and um, so they felt that at this point they needed to just trap them. And and, and since we, the city of Satellite Beach, m myself and uh, Mark Ryan, the city manager of Indian Harbor, we have been trying to find property owners to take these coyotes to relocate them, but it's been an impossibility. Um, so because of the urgency of the situation there, the city council decided to go ahead and trap and euthanize the animals. 
Um, they actually did find one in Martesia, um, kind of hanging out in somebody's yard. So <laughs> they, um, they want to get that done. So they are going to do that. I did send them an email um, supporting their decision. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. I have in my packet a thank you letter regarding the community paramedic, our community paramedic, Melanie Drake, and that is in um, their packet. It's not actually from a resident, but actually from Martin Health Systems, so the operation manager. A lot of the work that our community paramedic program is doing is working with other health agencies to coordinate with them and coordinate care. Um, so that is nice to hear that other agencies are also seeing the value of our work. Um, in terms of action items, we are asking for a special meeting to be held on April 20th at 6 p.m. And this is specifically for our Charter Review Committee to present council with their report. Um, we felt that because there's a small council this meeting, we have a lot of items going to the next meeting. So the next meeting, the city council agenda is, is pretty busy. And we wanted to give the Charter Review Committee due um, attention. And so we'd like to schedule that meeting with your permission. So I just need consensus. You said April, April, at 6 o'clock, right? On April yes, sir. 20th? Yeah. Okay. yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. I also am requesting City Council to approve a special edition beach caster. Um, and this would be to highlight the issues related to the lagoon. During the fish kill, we've received so many um, questions regarding what can I do, how can I help, um, what does our fertilizer ordinance say, you know, um, all kinds of questions on, um, you know, what are you doing and what is the city doing to help the lagoon, things like that. So uh, we would like to go ahead and start putting that together and this uh, special edition would hopefully go out by the middle of this month. Um, and that would be in addition to the beach caster that will be going out for May, June. Okay. No, that's okay with everyone? Consensus? Okay. okay. That'd be fine, yes. And that actually is all I have. So it really wasn't that much. Um, the action items, since they are action items, do you want to take some some comments? Uh, regarding the special, the uh, special meeting on the 20th? And the uh, special issue. Oh, I guess I think we we'll probably ought to consider those individually, I would say. Okay, so let's, let's open it for public comment regarding the actions items, the first of which is the uh, Charter Review Committee with the request to have a meeting on April 20th, uh, 2016 at 6 p.m. Is there any public comments regarding that meeting? Okay, hearing none, bring it back to Council, and I'll we'll also have the public comment portion regarding a special edition of the Beachcaster to highlight issues related to the lagoon. Is there any public comment regarding that? Okay, hearing none, bring it back to council. Okay. And we approve that we we move those forward on, as a consensus. Okay. All right, very good. All right. Okay, Courtney, thank you. Uh, and then you know, one thing I'd like to just kind of throw out there is, is Carrie, nice job on this. This is just... Oh, Cassie, nice, nice job. Just, it's amazing how, how many hours, how many hours, well, let me put it this way, how many hours does it take to put this together? A lot. Okay, okay, that's a good answer. But, I mean, that's just amazing what you guys are doing. I don't know how you possibly keep track of it all, but uh, congratulations on your efforts. That's just perfect. You're going to keep the kids busy this summer. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, that's... But great job, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, let's, um, and one thing I forgot to mention to council is agenda item uh, number eight. Uh, Courtney asked that that be pulled and placed on another agenda item, another council meeting as an agenda item in the future. Uh, let's move on to agenda item number six, which is presentation, presentation by Gearing Group Incorporated on Health Insurance Self-Insured Plan Update. And I'll turn it over to Courtney for introductions. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. This is Sean Fleming with Gearing Group, and he's going to go through basically an update on our um, partially self-insured plan. And this is, you know, just kind of to give council midway through the year what's happening, and, and this is a new product that we're using. Um, so we wanted to make sure that you knew how it was going, and, and so he's here to do that for us. Good evening, Sean. Great. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, as the city manager said, we really I know we spent some time on this last August, I believe it was, as we finalized the plans, and we wanted to give you not quite at the halfway mark, but a little bit of an update on how things are going, and a just a little bit of background of where we started and where we're, we're going with the plan. 
I'm going to test this first. If not, Jennifer might be driving for me. Why don't, why don't we try that? Um, and we can go ahead even on to the next one, Jennifer, there. So just a little background, uh, as a number of you probably remember from last year, when uh, for a number of years you were under a fully insured plan. And fully insured plan, as we look at it, you pay a set premium to the insurance company. The insurance company takes the risk. Claims are more than... Uh, then they collected, they lose money. If they're less, they make money. Uh, so what we did last year was we took you to a minimum premium or partially self-funded arrangement. And under that arrangement, you have protections of a fully insured plan and a cap. But if your costs are lower than expected, you have the potential to save that money. You know, the other option is a completely self-funded plan based on your size. You're a little smaller than we would like to see to take the risk on that. So you're really right in the middle. So as we move on to the uh, next slide there, just one, one piece of information that I always like to point out no matter where we go, regardless of what kind of plan you have on that spectrum, any of the three, the majority of your costs are claims. Regardless of the rhetoric we hear on the news or some of those things where everybody thinks there's a tremendous amount of profit in insurance, the majority of the costs are going towards paying claims. So that's when I go to the doctor, when I go to the pharmacy, when I go to the hospital. Uh, so I always like to keep that in mind. As we talk about protection in that program, there's two types of protections that I always like to remind everybody that we have. The first is what we call specific stop loss insurance. And what that is, is it's protection on any individual's claims for the year. So the example I always used, used to, uh, you like to use, apologize, is a premature baby. A premature baby could easily be a million dollar cost. So you have protection against that. So in your case, we have protection of $30,000. So the first $30,000 of a claims count against the city's experience or against your cost. The rest is covered by that reinsurance, so it doesn't count against you. The reason that's really important, especially based on your size, is large claims really don't discriminate just because you have 100 employees or 100,000. Those things happen. And then aggregate is really our protection on the overall cap of the program, and that's built into the program you have with Cigna. So moving on to the uh, next slide, just a, one more piece, kind of a background from last year. So we switched on October 1st to a graded funding renewal. That's what Cigna calls the program. Uh, it was an upgrade in one benefit, which is prescription coverage. That was partially because of the Affordable Care Act. Other than that, we made no other plan changes. We just, in the back end, switched to that um, partially insured model. And again, there's the 30,000. And obviously, that number for the aggregate can change based on enrollment, but your enrollment stays pretty consistent, so about $70,000 a month there is your aggregate protection on those claims. Uh, real quick, this is just, I think you're familiar with the schedule of benefits, but $15 in the primary care, $30 in the specialist, and then if you go into the hospital, there's a, a flat copay of $150 each time plus 15% coinsurance. And then you see ER, urgent care, and then your pharmacy benefits there. So as we move on, well, this is really the slide we wanted to get to, but we wanted to give you a little background. Um, what we have here, I'll just go kind of column by column. The first column on the left, as you can figure out, is the month, so starting with the plan year. The second one is the amount of funding that's put into the plan. So that is meant to cover both your claims and your administrative costs. So we have administration there, which you'll see is very low, and then we have reinsurance. Now, if you take a look at that, you might look and think maybe our numbers are a little off because why is administration only $1,700 in October, then it goes to 34, and then it goes to 7,000. And you'll see that it stays flat after that. So what Cigna actually does in that program is to help you get started, they actually cut some of your costs in the first couple months to give you a little bit of a break. So that's now, after December and on, we're at the mature levels, so to speak, for that. Then we have reinsurance, and that's for those protections we talked about. And then we have your actual claims that are paid out. So you'll see in the first month in October, that's very small. The reason is when you change a contract, the claims are what we refer to as immature. 
So I use the example of somebody that goes into the hospital on September 28th. Any of those claims before October 1st stay with the old program so they don't get counted in this. So that's why you only have 12,000 in claims. So we total all those up. Um, we do have reserves. Now what the city did was you guys actually set aside reserves in your reserve account and allocated them for the reserve amount. Just making sure that's correct. <laughs> um, so that was set aside, that 123000 was already set aside. But we like to use it in the calculation to really see uh, both a mature and immature number. So as we look at the total cost versus the funding in the left column, uh, you'll see we have a surplus of about 26000 for the month uh, or for the year so far. So we're about 5% below when we look at overall premium. 5% is good. We'd like to see better, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if you actually take out those reserves because you already set it aside, we're actually 30% below. So it's two different ways to look at it. Some people prefer the first method and say we should really count that. Others say, no, we set that aside, so we wanted to show you both on that. Uh, but overall, the plan's off to a good start. One thing I would remind you of is, because of your size, for a number of years, you never had any experience. Meaning we didn't know what your claims were with Health First. We didn't know what your claims were with Cigna. So the first year, we knew that it was a little bit, Cigna was making an educated estimate, but there wasn't a track record to play off of. But what I think is the most important part of that is now going forward, <coughs> we're gonna know. There's no more guessing. There's no more, hey, we got a 10% renewal, why did we get it? Everything, all the data is right in front of us now. Uh, so as we go to, I think I have one last slide. Um, what I wanted to really point out is the second bullet there, which is we talk about that stop loss at $30,000. So everybody starts fresh at the beginning of the year. And what we typically see in plans, especially on a group your size, and we looked at some of your large claims, you have about seven claims that are between twenty and $30,000. So as we go into the second half of the plan year, that reinsurance will kick in and cover more of the claims. So you typically see the surpluses increase pretty significantly in the last half of the year. I've had groups similar to your size be it a break even, you know, a little bit ahead like you are. And then, you know, by the end of the year, they've still saved $100,000 because that reinsurance starts kicking in and you're not paying for those existing large claims that are on the plan. Uh, so just some next steps and then be happy to answer any questions. One, a couple of things, obviously we're going to continue monitoring the plan um, and looking at some of those things. And then we're also actively still pursuing the clinic option which is one of the reasons we put this whole plan in place. If we do find a strategy that makes sense and we move forward with one thing that we will probably look at, doesn't mean that we have to do it, is look at the plan and see, you know, are there certain plan changes we would want to make to drive people to use a clinic should you go that route. So with that, um, anything that, any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Council, any questions before we go to public comment? I don't, I don't have any. Thank you for bringing this information to us, Sean. I mean, oh, I think it's pretty neat that we're starting yeah. down this path and we're showing, you know, progress and savings. Oh, definitely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sean, what I'd like to do is just open us up for public comment, see if yes, there's sir. any questions that either you or Courtney can potentially answer. At this time, public comment portion is open on agenda item number six. Is there any public comment? Okay. Hearing none, bring it back to council. Courtney, questions, comments, direction, anything? I just wanted to update you. Um, we also have a meeting tomorrow in Coco to discuss clinic options with the city of Coco. I think Rockledge is coming um, just to listen in, um, and also Coco Beach and Indian Harbor Beach. So, um, you know, uh, Sean will be there. Um, Mr. Gehring is actually here as well, um, and he will be there. Um, just. 
and just a, a note for our consultants, they've been indispensable in this whole process. I, I think they're, I call them the best decision I ever made <laughs> at, the, at the city. So they've been, they've been very good and we're very fortunate to have them. So thank you. Yeah. Just, I apologize, I should introduce Kirk Aaron, our, our CEO. Yeah, um, I'm so used to people normally just recognize the insurance uniform of the blue suit and the tie. <laughs> so I figured you probably figured it out, but I apologize there. <laughs> Just, just one quick question on the clinic options. Is there anything that, in particular, that's that you're looking at that's different than what we talked about the last time this subject was on the agenda? Um, no, um, it's we're basically just kind of moving through the process with the different cities. Um, every city has different needs, so it's it's been a process. We okay. did we did do a bid um, that's changed a little bit with the possibility of Coco participating. Um, so we are we're meeting tomorrow to talk to them about that. I don't know how that's going to go, um, but everything looks, you know, we're, we're all moving forward and kind of forge ahead. So. Very good. Okay. Council, any other comments or questions? Okay. I think it's neat that, you know, we have the cities that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. So that's, all, that's always good. Um, Sean, excellent presentation. Thank you for coming Thank out you. tonight. And Mr. Gehring, Thank glad you. you could be here as well. And uh, keep, let's keep moving forward. Yes, sir. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number seven, discuss, take action on award of bid and budget amendment to the uh, reconstruction of the community center dance floor. I'll turn it over to Courtney and to Carrie. I'll turn it over to Carrie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in the CIP for 1415 was um, allocated $40,000 for the replacement of the two dance floors in the Schechter Center. Those are original floors from 2002. They have about a 15-year life expectancy, so we're about where we're at. When we were getting the bids in um, 2013 in preparation for the CIP information, um, I felt at that time we'd be able to uh, replace the dance floor without having to um, do any work with the subfloor. The way that floor is constructed, it's um, actually dropped down four inches and then it's built back up with a series of um, two by fours and then crisscross plywood. And then the dance floor is actually placed on the top. Um, this is necessary for um, um, proper exercising, so you're not exercising on a, a flat cement floor because um, it has some give to it. And it's also um, a proper dance floor for ballet, tap, hip hop, jazz. So when we got the $40,000 estimate, that was pretty much right on target for just the replacement of the flooring. Um, but over the last couple of years, the actual subfloor has deteriorated. Um, you can see in the two photos that I have, we actually have holes in the floor now where the wood is just uh, rotted um, below the dance floor. Um, so the bid that came in, the first bid that came in um, at 90,000, um, we had to reject because it wasn't submitted properly. Um, we rebid it, the rebid came in um, properly submitted for the same amount. So in order to replace those dance floors, we've got to pull out the dance floor, all the subfloor, all that wood, and then we place the wood and the fluoride again at a cost of $90,000 plus. What's, what's the time frame, carry on, uh, start to finish on this? Um, we've confirmed with the installer, the contractor, if we give him from um, about two and a half weeks, um, we can fit him in when um, dance recital is uh, the weekend of May 13, 14. And he can be done and ready to go by the time we start our dance program for the summer of June the 6th. Okay. Working a lot of hours. Okay. Lorraine? Uh, I noticed that you only had one bid. Did that surprise you? It did surprise me, yes. Any sense of why no one responded? And I noticed that this one is from Satellite Beach. Mm -hmm. and do you know his work? Yes, I do. He also uh, refloored the clubhouse for us. Okay, so you have confidence in Yes. That. Well, I've told him at the clubhouse, you have one week and there's no wiggle room. And <laughs> he sent me an email back and he said, I will not wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he, um, I, I believe he would be able to get it done in the time allocated. It's, it's not a difficult project. It's very labor intensive. That is a lot of wood to remove. Putting a floor in on is easy. You just put it upside down, glue it, and flip it over. But it's all that flooring underneath is, is just a lot of wood. Well, I'll move to approve the bid selection of Brandon Stillion Incorporated for replacement of the dance floors and subfloors 
in the uh, Schechter Community Center and approve a budget amendment for $90,720 to come from the capital assets fund. I'll second the motion. Motion by Council, Councilwoman Guy, second by Councilman Montanero, and we, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, What's the lifespan on the floor going um, forward? I mean, they're telling us 18 years. I'm, I'm suspecting that 18 years is on a, a smaller dance studio that doesn't have 250, 300 mm -hmm. people a day or a day, uh, a week on it. Yeah. Um, and so is, that, I, is that what's, you know, caused the deterioration of the subfloor is just the, you know, the type of use that we get? I don't believe so. I believe that water got under that floor, um, and we're going to um, make sure that it gets, uh, the seams get sealed, and then around the border of the, um, the um, uh, uh, baseboards as well. I think water got under it right at the, the door frame, and it swelled that wood and rotted it. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if, if, we're, if we're looking at this going forward, you know, we need to, if we need to replace the floor prior to the deterioration of the subfloor, then I think, you know, we need to really look at that the next time mm -hmm. so that we don't run into this scenario because it also gives you the opportunity to see what the subfloor looks like when you pull up the floor if you replace it at 15 years. Mm -hmm. so. And Mr. Cillian did also say in his bid um, that if not all of the wood needed to be removed, he would adjust his bid accordingly. Okay, great. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. This time I'd like to open the public comment portion of agenda Item number seven is a public comment. Okay, here and then bring it back to council. Council, any more comments or concerns before we? Nothing. Okay, Lenore. Councilman Montanero. Yes. Councilman Yes. Vice Mayor Bryant. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Let's move on to, <coughs> excuse me, agenda item number nine. As I mentioned earlier, agenda item number eight. Uh, Courtney asked that that be pulled for a future council meeting. That's the TD Bank uh, Services contract. Uh, so let's move on to agenda item number nine, discuss, take action on staff proposal to apply any savings from road resurfacing projects to additional projects. And I'll turn it over to Courtney. Courtney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mayor before we proceed, wouldn't it make more sense to take number 10 before number nine? What, whatever. We, we actually put number nine in first to make room to do number 10. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. If 10 makes more sense because in 9 we're going to approve the other projects, but in 10 we identify the projects, so I think it's a good idea to know what the projects are before we approve. You do whatever you want. Number 10. Number 10. Are you all right with that, Don? Reverse the order? All right. We will go with uh, Councilwoman. Number 10 makes more sense. <coughs> That's what we wanted to hear. Okay. <laughs> All right, number 10. Number 10. Uh, staff is asking you to approve um, the 2015 road resurfacing program change order number one. Um, and basically a limited notice to proceed was issued on November 16th, 2015, and limitations were placed on the work activities due to holiday periods. Uh, we are requesting that um, we, you approve a time extension of approximately nine days. Uh, in addition, we are asking um, to approve uh, additional work, which would include milling and resurfacing of both City Hall driveways between Cassia Ditch Bridges and the parking lot, and that it is expected to cost $14,007. That would come out of an estimated $51,171.36 overrun, I mean, underrun, I'm sorry, in which we're saving money in the, the costs are coming in lower than expected. So. Basically, we have a 51000 in change budget um, uh, surplus, and we're asking to spend $14,007 on redoing the City Hall entrances, and we would have a remaining $37,164.36. With, with an extension of nine days? That's correct. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the 2015 Road Resurfacing Program Change Order Number 1. Second. Motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilwoman Gott to approve uh, 2015 Road Resurfacing Program Change Number 1, uh, the specific items outlined by City Manager Courtney Barker. At this time, I'd like to open the public comment portion of Agenda Item Number 10. Is there any public comment? 
Okay, bring it back to council. Any further discussion? All right. Um, in that uh, really excellent uh, beachcaster that was done on the infrastructure mm -hmm. project, uh, <laughs> I noticed that in this list of projects that have been completed on the street repaving, um, Hedgecock Court, Temple Street, and Trinidad are not included on the work that has been done in this resurfacing program. Um, are, are they going to be done? We might have moved them out, um, but if they, uh, I have to get the answer to that question. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I can, um, Alan is not here, and I don't want to say something wrong, so okay. I'll, I'll get back with you on that. Okay. And, and I had a question too. The thirty-seven thousand that's left over, are we going to utilize that for additional? Yeah. Work well, somewhere else? well, that was number uh, number nine. Okay. You're, well, getting, you're getting ahead of yourself, Tom. <laughs> Going back. We could have made it one agenda item, now that I'm thinking about it, but yeah, that's never not. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We've had public comment. Lenore? Councilman Dodd? Yes. Councilman Montanaro? Yes. Vice Mayor Martin? Yes, motion passes unanimously. Now let's move back to agenda item number nine. Courtney? In this instance, we are asking for your approval to use the savings from the road resurfacing program, which I described earlier in the earlier agenda item, to complete other projects and listed here on the page if we are able to. Um, so basically, part of the savings it comes from where they're mobilized. So if, the, if, the, um, if we're finished doing a street and it's convenient to go to the next street, we save money in that way. So we were asking basically for your trust <laughs> to move on to the next project that we need to do um, if we can, if we have enough savings to do that. So we're just basically going to take that $37,000 and wherever we can get what we correct. can get for, we're going to get it done. That's correct. All right. But it will include the milling and resurfacing at the city hall. Right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the use of the savings from the road resurfacing <coughs> program for additional road resurfacing projects. Second. Motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilwoman Gock to approve the use of the savings from the road resurfacing program for additional road resurfacing projects. At this time, I'd like to open the pu public comment portion of agenda item number nine. Is there any public comment? Okay, here we bring it back to Council. Any additional comments? Okay. We have a motion and a second to public comment. One more. Councilman Gock? Yes. Councilman Yes. Vice Mayor Martin. Yes, motion passes unanimously. Uh, Courtney, there was there was some discussion whether we wanted to move twelve up. It was twelve up as a time specific for Matt Culver versus going on to agenda item number eleven. What what are they are both here. Um, Matt Culver with Brevard County. Okay. And our consultant Dawson is here as well um, with Atkins. And so uh, we can move on to that agenda item. And agenda, and, uh, uh, agenda item number 12, which is to discuss take action on resolution 967. And I will turn it over to Jim Beadle to read that resolution. Jim? We're doing 12 first. Yes, we're doing 12 first. Yes. Ordinance number 967, and resolution of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida relating to water conservation, making findings, declaring April 2016 as Water Conservation Month, providing for distribution of this resolution, and providing an effective date. So reading ordinance number 967. Okay. Slight correction. Section one on page two. <coughs> the verb to be is, not are, each of the foregoing recitals is I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 967 as corrected. As corrected. Second. Motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilwoman Gott to approve Resolution 967 as uh, amended. This time I'd like to open the public comment portion of agenda item number 12, Resolution number 967. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, bring it back to Council. <clears throat> Courtney, anything else to add regarding this? Okay. Council, anything else? Okay. Uh, we have a motion, a second, and we've had public comment. One more. Go ahead. Councilman Dodd? Yes. Councilman Montero? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Let's move move on to agenda item number, or back to agenda item number 11. Discuss take action to piggyback off an agreement with the Bavard County Engineering Consultant. Um, 
to perform a muck removal assessment. And I'll turn it back to Courtney. Courtney? Uh, thank you. Uh, we are requesting Council's approval to piggyback off the bidding services of Brevard County Engineering Consultant Atkins North America, Inc., to perform a muck removal assessment phase one of canals within the city of Satellite Beach and approve a budget amendment in the amount of $25,360. Um, basically, the cities of Indian Harbor Beach and Satellite Beach are collectively seeking an assessment of the quantity of mucks in our canals um, within each other's city, city's limits along the southern portion of the Grand Canal to the southernmost canal within the city of, Satellite, in, city of Indian Harbor Beach on the eastern shore of the Banana River. Um, so basically, we are requesting to piggyback off the fit and services process of Brevard County um, under their continuing services contract with Atkins North America, Inc., to perform the first phase of this project, and that includes a uh, bathymetric, I'll let Dawson come up here and talk about that, um, survey to determine the extent and volume of the muck, and, uh, and then provide a, sur uh, a review of the survey. So go ahead and describe what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Walker Dawson. I'm an engineer with Atkins North America. Um, we're a consultant for Brevard County. Um, and we are supporting their efforts to obtain authorization and ultimately execute the muck, muck removal of two projects that the county is pursuing at this point, one of which is um, up in the MIMS area, and then the other one is the northern portion of Grand Canal, which the southern extent basically comes down to the, to the northern boundary of the city of Satellite Beach. Um, and as Courtney said earlier, both uh, the cities of Indian Harbor Beach and Satellite Beach recognize the potential opportunity here and they have city staff has expressed um, a desire to you know assess what what volume of muck is within the city's canals and you know basically this would be a step one let's let's go out and see how much muck is out there um, the vast the lion's share of the cost in this is associated with the bathymetric survey and the muck probing basically what we do and this is exactly what we did for the northern portion of Grand Canal. Um, we have a, a surveyor that's under contract with us. Uh, well, they're under contract with the county, I should say. Um, and they'll go out and do very extensive bathymetric surveys. They'll do muck probing, where they basically, for lack of a better description, it's, it's basically a, a piece of rebar with you know markings on it that identify depths. They'll stick it in the muck until they hit refusal. They'll identify what that what that depth is, and they'll do it. For every 100 feet, they'll do five probes and cross sections across every single canal for, for all of the, the city's canals. Um, then they'll generate uh, bathymetric maps. Then they'll generate what I call color banded muck depths. Um, it's basically a plan view map that you can see the, the colors which indicate, you know, warmer colors indicate thicker muck, cooler colors indicate thin muck, so on and so forth. And then um, we'd identify what the quantities, the volumes uh, of muck are within each of the city's canals, and then we'd come back, have a meeting, meeting with city staff, and present the findings, and then figure out um, you know, where the cities want to go from here. So that's really, in essence, what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and basically what we're trying to do is, is work with Brevard County and try to prep some of the engineering and the permitting and, and kind of capitalize on their projects to see if we can get ours in there mm -hmm. as well. So, um, and Matt Culver with Brevard County is here. He is the MUC project lead person. Yeah, I um, think so. If you want to, if you have any questions about the dredging and the, the county's projects, um, I asked him to be at the meeting because I know that those questions are inevitably going to come up. So you're the county's big muckety muck. Oh, the big. That handles a lot of stuff. You used to handle the. Uh, you still handle the the boats that are out there too. The, uh, yeah, I sure say do. This this abandoned boats. Darren and Fetzer will actually yeah. have a project that's going to start here in a couple of weeks. We'll be taking out some sunken boats also. <coughs> so, um, but um, with regards to the muck removal, you know the county's working. We have uh, five projects underway. Um, a big project, one of our biggest project areas is actually right here in the Grand Canal, the northern section, which we're already uh, actually working with Atkins. Um, we've done an assessment on, we've got the applications just in, and um, we're actively um, we're, we're doing what we can to pursue more additional funds from the legislature. And as we as funding comes in, we're looking um, shovel ready projects are always the best bet, the quickest way to get going, or something that's underway. So, um, I mean, to have something like this going for the city, we, the county, if, if it comes to that phase as we move forward, um, having something available to jump right into helps, um, helps 
your chances of keeping things moving countywide. And of course, as we all know, there's been a lot of issues with the lagoon, so these projects are pretty important right now for the region. Okay. Thank and you. I, I, I'm totally in favor of this because, you know, this is another tool in our tool bag. When we go to Tallahassee, we're going to have some new legislators um, coming up after November. And, you know, I think every one of them that's out there running understands the dilemma that the lagoon is going through. But for us to be able to go in and say, this is what we have and we need money to get rid of it and here's what it's going to take. Um, it gets us higher up on the pecking order and it also gives us the ability of giving them exact numbers because that's what they look for. When you go to Tallahassee, they want to see numbers. They don't want to see we got a problem but we don't know exactly what it is. So. For us to be able to give them those numbers for what it's going to cost us to do this, I think it's well worth it. Is that a motion? Uh, I'll make that as a motion to approve uh, the recommended action of approving the piggyback off the bid services for Brevard County Engineering Consultant Atkins North America to perform a muck removal assessment of the canals within the city of Satellite Beach and approve a budget <coughs> amendment in the amount of $25,360. General fund, unrestricted From the reserves. general fund, unrestricted reserves. A motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilwoman Gott. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the public comment portion of agenda item number 11. Uh, if you have any questions of Council or of Matt or Walker, please come forward. John. John Ferris, 135 Maple. Uh, question probably for the engineer. And that would be mentioned color coded for the depth of the muck. The other question I'd have is, is the data going to also permit you to know what the overlying water depth is going to be to the surface of the muck? Because when I did my survey in 96, there was quite a bit of difference in the depth of the water. Right, say, say that, I'm not following you, John. Say it again. The map he mentioned, the color coded yeah, map, is gotcha. going to show you how deep the muck is. Correct. To give you a volume. Okay. But my question is whether the data being collected will also tell you how far the surface of the muck is below the surface of the water. Oh, okay. I'm not sure that's critical at this point, but once you're out there, you might as well get it if that's not okay. a problem. Walker? Um, to answer his questions, yes, it will be. There's two parts to the survey. There is the um, we will be characterizing the depth of the water. That's the bathymetric survey portion of it. And then the muck probes will characterize where the, the natural bottom is. So you have this, you know, we have a bathymetric survey that shows you where the top of muck is, I guess, for you know, lack of a better description. And then um, the muck probes will show you the, the existing bottom, the natural bottom. So yeah, it'll, it'll house both of those pieces of information. Okay, very good. So. Okay. All right, additional public comment or questions? Hearing none, bring it back to council. Council? Anything else? Okay. Um, Lenore? Councilman Dodd? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes, motion passes unanimously. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for coming out. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank appreciate you, you taking your evening out and to spend with us. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good seeing you, Matt. Take it easy. Okay. okay. Um, well, agenda item number 13, agenda items for next regular council meeting. Courtney. It's going to be a long meeting, and I'm sorry, but we, we kind of piled it on. We'll, we'll try to keep it as small as possible, but um, you will have your waste management items coming through this meeting and, and some other high <coughs> uh, intensity. And we also have the meeting, the 6 o'clock meeting, too, that That's same correct. evening. Okay, yes. all right. So Dinner. get good rest. Dinner. You want us to provide <laughs> Can you do that? Okay. She said, yeah, I can yeah. She says, yeah. <coughs> That's all you got? We can do it, yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number 14, appointments to boards. Lenore, any? Um, before you have the information with regard to Scott Waymar, you need to turn that microphone to face you, please. As you will recall, at the last, at the March 2nd council meeting, um, City Manager Burke identified uh, Mr. Scott Waymar, who serves on the Sustainability Board with his uh, lack of attendance. Um, you have your attendance log, and you also have the reference of the, the City Board Handbook regarding attendance. So, 
you will need to identify whether or not he will remain on the board or what action needs to be taken at this time. Also, you will note that the library board identified the lack of attendance of Barbara Stasco. She has served on the board for quite some time, and due to a family event, she would like to resign after her term has expired, which is in May. Hope Asher has been present for all meetings, as you will note on the attendance law, and the board has requested that she change now back to a primary member on the library board. I also have a... Margie Soliday will be resubmitting her application. She had turned one in last year around March and would be available for interviews in the month of June when she is available for an informal interview between 6.30 and 7.00. So she could potentially serve as an alternate member in future meetings for the library board. So in your consideration for those positions, just keep that in mind that I do have a pending application. With Mr. Stephan Neroda, I wanted to bring your attention that Mr. Richard Kulong had recently resigned from the board due to his family wanting to travel a bit more, and he thanked the council for the opportunity to serve. So with that being said, there is an importance to have a full board on the board of adjustment, and you will note from the previous workshop meeting that Mr. Neroda was willing to serve on several boards wherever he can do the best for what the city's needs are. So with that being said, I will leave it up to you for your appointment. But the primary with Mr. — with the man we interviewed tonight, Mr. Neroda, the primary interest we have with him is obviously with the board of adjustment, but also he's willing to serve on at least one other board, either the REC or Sampson's Island. Okay. All right. So who was resigning from a board? Was that on the board of adjustment, Kulong? Yes. That just came up recently. It's not on my memo. I just wanted you to be aware of that. He's not even on the board of adjustment list. I know. I just removed him. Oh, okay. So there's an open position for a regular member? A primary member position, yes. Okay. Well, I'll start with new appointments. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Stephen Neroda to the board of adjustment as a regular member to fill the remaining term of board member Kulong, who's resigned. And I would also like to make a motion to appoint him to the recreation board as a — I think that was a regular member on the recreation board, too, right? Right. As a regular member on the recreation board. So that's my motion. Okay. I have a problem with appointing Mr. Neroda as a primary member because we have Suzanne McClendon, who has been serving as an alternate, and it is our practice — May I speak? Yes. Suzanne McClendon does travel, and she has identified that she does not want to be a primary member. She would rather prefer for somebody to serve that is here locally all of the time. Okay. All right. So then I'm good with that one. And what was your vote on that? Same guy. Because he wanted to serve on both boards. He's a primary on the alt-rec, too. Is that correct? You want him as a primary on both boards? Okay. Second. A motion by Councilman Montanaro, second by Councilwoman Gott. Which one is that, Nancy? One's a rec board and one's a board of adjustment? Yes. If you need to research it, Jim, we can pull back one of those. The board of adjustment clearly would be subject to dual office holding. I don't know about the rec board. I don't think so, but I don't — Well, I would do this. I'll rescind the recreation board 
part until we can get a determination. My, my gut is is it shouldn't be a problem, but, but I let's wanna... let you research that, and then we can reappoint him to the rec board. So uh, my motion will just be to put him on as a permanent member on the board of adjustment okay. we'll until use... we get a ruling from the attorney. Or you can make a contingent on. Why don't we do a contingent? Okay, that's fine. Is that all right with you, Larry? Yes. So your motion is to appoint him as primary to both, both board boards contingent and upon the attorney. Contingent upon uh, council review. The City council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Second, motion is second. Lenore. Council McGaugh. Yes. Council Montanero. Yes. Vice Mayor Bryant. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. On um, the library board. Uh, Barbara Sergo <coughs> has already uh, missed an unacceptable number of, has an unacceptable number of unexcused absences, and she does not care to be reappointed. Um, so, I would move that um, we remove Barbara Stasco from the library board and replace her as an alternate with Hope Asher as a primary member. May, may I rec make, make a recommendation? Barbara Stasco has served on the library board for I can't tell you how long. I think allowing her to remain uh, to during her term, she's de she missed those meetings because of a family event, and I know that for a fact, um, and she would never do that intentionally. I think it would be, you know, yeah, it's just one more meeting, and it would, it would be, you know, kind of a sign of respect to allow her to remain okay. in her term. Then I change my motion to... Barbara Stasco's term is up five, five, six, next eight. month. Mm -hmm. So upon vacating that permanent member's position, yeah. um, I would appoint <coughs> Hope Asher uh, as a primary member of the library board. I'll second it. The motion by Councilwoman Gott, second by... Councilman Dom, uh, Montanero. And that primary seat would begin 6 of 16, right? Because. Yeah. Yeah, the yes. next meeting. Okay. Yes. The next meeting. Okay. Okay. Lenore? Well, wait, wait. Would that be. Uh, would that be necessary? Because I noticed that Hope Asher's term expires in August. And we're but that's an alternate member term. We're taking a few months away from her, and I don't think that the positions themselves have times assigned. That the dates are assigned according to appointment of people, and so. Um, but then again, she'd have to come up and a reappointment in August. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it as a problem. We just we are appointing her as a permanent member, with the term beginning June 16. Mm -hmm. Works for me. And it's a three. Those are three-year terms, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Actually, they're not, but because uh, we changed that. That's right too. Month. Yep. Are you okay with? I mean, are you, you do the motion no. again? Or are you guys no, good? I'm good. No, my question is: Is um, Barbara Stasco's term expires um, May 5th? And we're really replacing her, so I would almost say that your appointment term date should be, you know, May 5th, 2016 through the 19th versus so June. Moved. I'm good. Okay. And that, you, you're obviously rescinding your previous motions. Okay. And seconds. Okay. Yeah. It's the it's hardest the, the thing we did tonight. It, it, it's the seating change that's done it. That, that's what's necessary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Lenore. We I think we're voting on something. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilman McGott? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryant? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. I want to ask um, the. I, I, before you go on to something else, can I get a clarification of your motion about the Board of Adjustment and. 
fretboard. Is it your intention that if he cannot do both, that he will be appointed for the Board of Adjustment? Because you made it, because your motion was, is it to, you're appointing him to both contingent on what I say, but nothing about what the default's going to be. The default you, would be the Board of Adjustment. Okay, but that wasn't part of your motion, so that's I what, I think you need to clarify that. You want me to that. clarify that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify my motion to, if the recommendation comes back from the attorney that he cannot serve on both boards, the Board of Adjustment would be the board. All right, now before, in other words, appoint him to the recreation board contingent upon uh, yeah. approval by the city attorney. Yeah. Okay, now procedurally, so, do we have to go back and rescind everything we've done? No. This I think is just strictly clarification. I think you do a motion to clarify the prior motion is all it is. Yeah. That's what that's what I said. Okay. All right. We're not doing this again. <laughs> So where are we? Well, going to take are you wanting me to do the roll call back on that clarification? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a motion. That was a motion. I have a second. Motion and a second. Okay. Um, Councilman Agat? Yes. Councilman Montanaro? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So going to the sustainability board, um, I know Scott dropped off a bunch of stuff that, you know, we were trying to get to Dwayne to freeze. Do you know how any of that transpired, or do we have any feedback on any of that? No, but I will. I, you know, I did speak with um, Virginia Barker a couple days ago regarding the beach pastor. They're, they're submitting an article, and I just wanted to just, uh, you know, for them, um, I, when I called, I said, how are you doing? And she said, well, I'm just, you know, talking to a lot of um, companies that have solutions for the lagoon now, <laughs> and I'm trying to explain to them that we are not – they're guinea pigs. They have to test it on their own and submit proposals, you know, and let us, you know, after that. So that's where they're at, and, and they're the leaders of these projects. So mm -hmm. um, we we sent that over to the appropriate people, but that's all we can do. Yep. Okay. Well, based on his attendance, and I know Scott, and I know he travels a lot, and I know it's hard for him to be at these meetings, but I also know there's a lot of other people that are willing to sit in there uh, in that seat. So. Um, as much as I hate to say it and hate to do it, I, I would make a motion to remove him from the board because he can't be at the meetings, and it's just the nature of what he does for a living that he can't be there. Would you rephrase that so that uh, it has a legal context to say removed from the board due to excessive, unexcused absences of the board's handbook? That's the motion. Okay, and that's my second. Okay, a motion and a second regarding Scott Edward Waymar. Councilman McGuff? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Vice Mayor Byron? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. And then I think we have Nancy Woodman left. That's correct. So I will move to reappoint Nancy Woodman, Woodman as a primary member of the Beautification Board. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second for reappointment. Lenore? Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilman McGuff? Yes. Vice Mayor Byron? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Is that it? No, item 15. Well, I'll I'm make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 16th council meeting as submitted. Second. A motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilman Gott to approve the adoption of the minutes of March 16th, 2016 regular meeting. Councilman Gott? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes, motion passes unanimously. Ms. Parker, anything else? Um, we did pass out a calendar to you. The highlighted meetings that are our proposals for the dates for the community meetings. Uh, we would like you to review these with your schedules and let us know if you have any conflicts by the next meeting for you to vote on these dates. Okay. I have a conflict already. I'm going to be in Wyoming on June 7th. Okay. We'll send it over to me and we'll, we'll try to reschedule it. Okay. Um, are we, when we do these meetings, are we going to kind of do them the way we did them last year where, you know, we each do some type of a presentation? Because I think it'll probably change a little bit. Th this is this is great that we're doing these, and I think we have a lot of information that we're going to be able to share with our residents on things that are going on and things that are coming up. So I'm 
Now, this, this is originally your idea to do this stuff, as you recall. And it worked out really well. It's working out great. But, uh, okay, and uh, lastly, just a reminder, Courtney, that, that this is correct, that our next meeting is April 20th, and it begins at 6 p.m. That's okay. correct. Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. This meeting is adjourned. It is one of the fastest. <laughs> 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 <laughs>